Hey, hey folks, Nitno here. Today we are taking a look at staying alive in Namalsk and other winter maps. Your main enemy in Namalsk is the weather, and fighting against the elements will be a challenge. You'll find that the harsh weather may influence survivors to band together and share the warmth of a fire. Peace. Or you might find desperate survivors betraying each other just to get the scarce resources to stay alive. Uh. Spawning in, you will immediately need to start planning on how you're going to stay warm. Being cold will increase the speed in which you get thirsty and hungry. You are in a race against the clock to find food, water, and a way to stay warm. The mollusk also introduces a new mechanism called frostbite. You can tell if a body part is in danger of frostbite if you check your inventory, and in the top right you see a category highlighted in blue. This body part is at risk due to being too cold, such as being unprotected or wet. If this body part turns to a gray highlight, that body part will now have frostbite. You will see the sickness indicator in the bottom right. This effect cannot be cured and your maximum health will permanently be lowered. It is imperative that you understand how to make a fire. There are three basic item types needed for a fire. Kindling, fuel, and ignition. When you spawn in, you will already have rags, which is a form of kindling, and a flare, which can be used for ignition. We'll just need to find fuel. You can easily harvest sticks from nearby trees by hand. Just know that sometimes your hands can get cut if you're not wearing gloves, you'll just have to use one of your bandages. Often you will receive long sticks from trees, just place them in your hand and you'll get an option to split them into small sticks. Combine the rags with the short sticks to create a fireplace. Light your flare and use that to ignite your fireplace. This is just one example of the many ways you can make a fire. If you stay by your fire long enough, you'll receive a heat buffer. This can be seen by a plus symbol next to your temperature. This means that for a few minutes after leaving your fire, you'll retain your heat. This will make getting to your next destination a lot easier, so always make sure to get the heat buff before leaving your fire. I want to show you a quick little trick you can do. It's kind of cheeky, but basically what you can do is create a fireplace, combine sticks and rags, and then fill that fireplace up with a whole bunch of logs, and you can actually pick it up and put it in your backpack. For instance, cutting up six logs, that's gonna take a ton of space if you were to put those logs just in your backpack. Instead, put them all in the fireplace, put a whole bunch of sticks in there, you can even put rags in there, and then just take that fireplace, put it in your backpack, and you've got a whole bunch of items prepared for your next fire. Next, let's take a look at clothing. Each piece of clothing will have an insulation rating. This rating ranges from bad, low, medium, high, to best. While you loot buildings, you'll want to check for clothing that will upgrade your insulation rating. The durability of your clothing also affects insulation rating. For instance, if we take a badly damaged sweater with an insulation rating of low, we can repair it with the sewing kit or duct tape and as you can see, we have repaired the durability to worn, and it now has high insulation. Holding on to a way to repair your clothing will be valuable in the long run. Say you have a bunch of zombies on you and you take a bunch of hits, that's going to take your clothing down to a lower durability and lower insulation. So if you have that way to repair your clothing, you're going to be more prepared and be able to hold on to the insulation a little bit better. Snow, rain, and other moisture will have a negative effect on your clothing. Make sure to utilize cover whenever possible. Your clothing will become progressively more saturated, resulting in a status of damp, wet, soaked, and drenched. Each debuff will reduce the amount of warmth the clothing provides. Therefore, it is imperative that you stay dry by seeking shelter. If you're caught in a storm and no shelter is available, take to the forest as trees do provide a level of cover. It is important to know how to dry your clothing. You can wring out your clothing by placing them in your hand and selecting ring, but this will only improve your clothing to damp. 
your most effective option is to dry your clothing at a fireplace. The best option is to actually take your clothing off of you and place them next to a fire. This will rapidly dry your clothing. Make sure you trust everyone around you though when you take off your clothing. Don't get caught with your pants down. While you're by the fire, you will also want to thaw frozen items. Cans of food and drinks you find around the mollusk will often come frozen. You cannot eat or drink frozen items without first thawing them. To thaw a can, simply place it next to a fire and wait for the status to change to freezing or better. Once the can is no longer frozen status and it's just at freezing status, you can open it and start eating or drinking. The mollusk has a unique danger that is called EVR storms. To put it simply, the mollusk can experience a lightning storm where everything starts to fade to red and black and get all crazy. If you see this, get indoors as this will offer some protection. If you are caught outside during an EVR storm, it will knock you unconscious and even in some cases damage you, break limbs, or even kill you. There are some details to why the EVR storms happen that's mostly lore related though. I'd like to leave some things for you guys to discover that are lore related, so I don't want to spoil everything for you guys. Basically, if you see this guy going black to red, a lot of weird sounds happening, get inside and just wait out the storm. Alright, I've got a couple more tips to fire off, let's just get right into them. Gun cleaning kits seem to be very useful in the mosque. The way the current loot table is set up, it's very common to find guns that are in various damaged states. Having a gun cleaning kit will be very helpful for keeping your guns in good condition and free from jamming. Hunting and fishing will greatly increase your self-sufficiency. The further south you go, the less buildings and food sources you will have. Always keep the option to hunt and fish on your mind. The ground in the mollusk is completely frozen and you cannot dig up worms as bait. You can still fish with an improvised fishing rod and bone fishing hook, but you'll have a much better chance to fish with a real fishing rod and a real fishing hook. If you find one, hold on to it. There is a soft skill to resist cold, but it takes many hours to level. The longer you stay alive, the better you'll resist cold. I'm talking about 10 hours or so, you're going to see the effects go up. So to summarize the gameplay loop, you'll travel to a new area, utilize cover, build a fire, thaw your cans, cook your food, dry your clothes, get the heat buff, set off to your next destination, rinse and repeat. The longer you stay alive, the higher your soft skill, making it easier to resist the cold. Before you know it, you'll be a Namalsk veteran. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like. As always, have fun in Daisy. Take it easy. Peace.